Good day and welcome to the channel. In this uh, video we're going to take this Dell Inspiron 3000 laptop, specifically this is a, I think a 3511, uh, which is a very inexpensive laptop from Dell. And we're going to unbox it, we're going to uh, pull it apart to show you how you can upgrade it, and then we're going to set it up and benchmark it so we can see if this is something we want to keep. By the way, it's completely unsponsored, bought this for myself, uh, and uh, for those of you who watch the channel regularly, you'll know that uh, I do have a proper shop, but I'm assuming you don't. So I'm going to try to use normal tools, not specialized tools, so that you can see what uh, you can upgrade if you need to if you need to pull it apart, put more memory in, or whatever else. Okay, now just before we get to it, the reason I bought this one in particular is because it has a very high spec for the price. This is selling for about five or six hundred dollars Canadian. So let's go with uh, 450 US for easy math. And for that, you get an 11th gen uh, Core i3. That's a pretty good chip. You also get eight gig of RAM. You also get a backlit keyboard, which is awesome. So help, so helpful. And it comes with a 256 gig solid state drive, which is not huge by any stretch, but certainly with uh, cloud services like OneDrive, way more than most people are actually going to use. And the last important feature is the screen resolution. So this is a 15.6 inch laptop, um, which in these lower price models is almost a thir almost always a 1366 by 780, something like that resolution. This is a full HD. This is 1920 by 1080. That is a big deal. For that price, fantastic. This is a universal charger, it'll work anywhere in the world, but because I'm in North America, they ship me the North American plug. Plug it in, look for the power light. Okay, the first thing I notice is that it's made of uh, plastic, which is just fine with me. Uh, some people get upset about that, I do not, I don't care. It's solid, it feels solid, it's good. It also has a hinge that lifts here, so when I lift it up, it puts the keyboard on a bit of an angle, which is quite nice. Okay, the keyboard feels Good, has a number pad, which is really nice. Now we're going to also explain what features are missing from this as we go through it, but let's go through the ports. So there is a card reader. That is an old school USB 3.1 connector. Headphone jack, nothing along the back, nothing along the front. And on the other side, we have power, HDMI, I believe that's HDMI 1.4, and two super speed USB 3 ports. No Type-C, one thing that's missing. Let's see if I can use a regular Phillips screwdriver. I think I can, which I'm a little surprised at. Yep, no kidding, I can, look at that. Okay, I have more specialized tools, but not gonna use them. Okay, pro tip, when you take your screws out, put them down in the order in which they came out so that you can put them back in the same order. Now, in this case, I think they're all the same size, so it's probably not an issue. Now the next thing to look for is a pry point around the outside. A pry point is just a, a gap that's been intentionally put in the system. And I can see here that this is just lifted up. Okay, that's a little harder than I expected, so I'm going to, I am going to go around with the card. Okay, so what I've learned is that these two screws in the back corners have washers on them so they don't just jump out. Everything else just falls out. It's actually a pretty good material. All right, let's go through it. That's the connector for your battery. So if you needed to replace this battery, very simple. Pull this back and pull out the one, two, three, that looks like it, uh, screws. It'll just fall out and then you can put a, put a replacement in. You can add in a two and a half inch drive. It actually gives you the drive chassis, which is pretty surprising. Um, and it's got the uh, connector as well, the ribbon cable. Dell used to be famous for stripping out these extra parts so that you couldn't upgrade it yourself, but yeah, there it is. Uh, two memory slots. This is an eight gig uh, that I've got in here, but I could add a second uh, one in here. This unit will support up to 32 gig of RAM, so I could replace this with a 16 and put a 16 in here and I'd be okay. What's under here, boys and girls? Ah, just chips. That's just a shield. This is a heat pipe, so basically the CPU is under here, 
and the heat is transferred through this heat pipe to the fan. If you ever have this part, unless it's brand new like this, blow that out. And if you don't have any compressed air, use your mouth. Just blow on it and get the crud out of there because it will clog up over time. In fact, this is the only moving part in the entire system, so that's the part you need to be concerned with. Fortunately, if it does blow up, it's easy enough to replace. Just a couple of screws and you're on your way. And then here is the M.2 solid state drive. And you can see that they've put in uh, I could pull the shield off here and show you, but I'm not going to bother. Under here is just a little M.2 2230 or a 2242, but I could put in a full 2280 M.2 SSD. Very nice. Speakers on each side, of course. This is your Wi-Fi card. There's two cables coming off of here in case you're wondering what those are for. They are antennas. So one goes behind the keyboard, the other will go behind the screen. All right, let's put this back together. Clip it down from the front and work your way back. Always go around afterwards and make sure everything is tight. In case you're wondering why there's so many screens when you set up a computer these days, it's because uh, they had to meet general protection data regulation, GDPR in Europe standards and that means every screen needs to ask a single question and it needs to be clear uh, with uh, clear answers. A lot of people don't understand pins. Pins are a great idea. Why? Why are they better than passwords? Well, a pin is better than a password because the pin is tied to this physical machine. So if somebody got your pin, they can't do anything with it unless they're physically in front of your machine. And if they're physically in front of your machine, you got bigger problems. I do want this to pull my settings from another computer. This one. You don't have to do that. You could just set it up as a new computer. Ships with 30 days of Microsoft 365, which is a very good product. Do you know that if you buy this, you get, which is uh, somewhere around a hundred bucks a year, that that works on five different computers, five. So you can give it to your mom and your son and your daughter. Um, you can put it on your phone, wonderful. And you get a terabyte of OneDrive space, well worth the money. However, I am on Microsoft Partner, so I'm going to decline this because I will install it a different way. Now here's something ugly, McAfee is on here apparently. And McAfee uh, corporate product is okay, the retail product is horrible. Very first thing I'll do is remove it. Okay, this is Windows 11, and uh, the big new feature in Windows 11 is this start bar uh, expands and contracts like a Mac. I hate it because I don't like things bouncing around. I want things to be in the same place all the time so I don't have to guess as to where they are. So, how do I fix that? Not a problem. Go down to the bottom, right click, taskbar settings, scroll down, taskbar behaviors, change it from center to left. There we go, much better. Next thing to do, remove garbage programs. Nope, everything else is good. Okay, good on Dell. In case you're wondering, they put uh, those product, those programs on because they get paid for it. So Dell wants to make as much money as they can, especially on these low margin machines. Next thing to do is to patch. So right click on the start button and select settings. And then go to Windows Update. And there's probably a pile of things here that need to get cleared. Yep, there we go. When you think you're done here, you're probably not. Scroll all the way down to Advanced Options. And there's a couple of settings you probably want to change. The first is uh, receive updates for other products. Yep, you bet. By the way, this is just the video card driver being updated, so it's turned the screen off. It'll come back in a second. Don't sweat. There it is. Receive updates for other Microsoft products, yes. Next thing is delivery optimization. This means instead of pulling things down from the internet, allow them to come off of your local network. So your wife's computer, your husband's computer, your kid's computer, whatever. Just patches, by the way. And yes, they're all encrypted and secure, so you don't have to worry about well, you know, my husband's got some garbage on his... Yeah, it's not about that. Next thing is optional features. Go into optional features and make sure you turn everything on here. Now, this often stalls. Don't panic. It's fine. Just let it sit. And while we're waiting for that to unlock, let's right click on the start button and go to device manager so we can see what's installed, what's not. Oh, everything's installed. That's nice. Okay, we've rebooted with patches, let's go check for patches again and run the Dell update and then we'll benchmark it and then we'll give you our review. Now this machine ships with Windows 
S mode. And S mode, in case you're not familiar, simply means I can't install anything that didn't come from the Microsoft Store. And the benchmarking tool I want to use is called User Benchmark, and it's not in the store. So how do you get around that? Well, I cheated while you weren't looking and I removed S mode from this machine and now it just runs regular Windows 11. And I've already gone to userbenchmark.com and downloaded the benchmarking tool because you want to know what the numbers are in this thing, what the, the practical application of this machine is, not just some guy's opinion. So let's go try to get some numbers. So one of the things I've also done is turned off everything I can. So I'm gonna get rid of Edge. Uh, I've turned off, uh, well, there were a couple other things here, Teams and other things. I've also gone in and I've turned off the antivirus, as you can see. So let's get to user benchmark and run this thing. Here are some benchmarks that if you understand what these mean, you can read through them. They're not rocket science. The simplified version is it's a pretty powerful computer for all the day-to-day -day use. If you're gaming, not the right device. When I say gaming, I'm not talking about basic games. I'm not talking about even 3D games. I'm talking about the intensive first-person shooter type games. Those are going to not play very well on here, but that's not what it's for. As a workstation, uh, which is a high-end corporate thing, that it often involves these days the GPU, which is again quite weak. It's not gonna be great, but for normal use, office, school, home use, this is gonna be a great machine. Okay, so what do we like, what do we not like about this? Let's get to the review. The first thing we like is the price. For the price, this is as good as you're going to get in today's world. Even with Boxing Day sales and Black Friday, this is about as good as it's gonna get. This is about uh, $400 US, give or take and for this with the with a good quality spec so let's go over the positives great screen nice and bright uh and it's a full 1080p uh, screen it's uh not a low res not a low res screen the whole unit is thin and light uh a few years ago this would have been an executive laptop or an ultra portable uh today it's just a normal um very thin nice laptop the only thing that makes it a little bit larger is because it's 15.6 inch uh it um well, it's a little bit physically larger, but not a whole lot. We like the uh, build quality as well. Uh, we like that we can upgrade the RAM. We like that we can add a uh, hard drive in, uh, either two and a half inch, or we can easily replace the M.2. The CPU in here, the i3, it's an 11th gen i3. It's great. Could it be better? Oh yeah, but you're not paying for that. And something else we like that we didn't mention before is that under this keyboard, is a membrane and that's uh, what they call spill proof so you can take your coffee or hot chocolate or scotch or whatever you're drinking and if it spills on here you can wipe it off and probably be okay it won't get into it won't seep into the uh, circuitry and blow up your machine so that's a nice thing okay those are the positives let's go with the negatives what's wrong with it well there's a few things mostly what's wrong with it are things that we didn't choose to put into it so it's not so much that this machine is not capable of them it's that we didn't choose to pay for them. So things like a touch screen. Touch screen costs about $100 more usually. Love touch screens, but didn't want to pay the money. So didn't pay the money, didn't get it. Next thing, infrared camera. I want face recognition, doesn't have it. Most people don't use face recognition anyway. So for you, it's probably just great. And really the only two sort of actual negatives that I see are one, they used a cheap USB two uh, uh, connector on the far right hand side. And that's fine because you plug in a keyboard, a mouse, or anything that's old, uh, and it'll work just great. If you need high speed, you have to use the two super speed ports over here, USB 3.1 ports. So that's the first thing. The second thing is this hardware, the CPU and chipset is capable of Thunderbolt, but they didn't put a USB Type-C connector in here, uh, and so there's no Thunderbolt connector on here. Which, is that a crisis? No, no, it really isn't. So overall, I would say that this is an excellent machine for the money. I'm glad I bought it. Uh, if I wasn't, I would return it. I have returned other products just recently because they were not up to par, but this is a keeper for me. Hey, if you found this video useful, please give us the thumbs up and subscribe is always appreciated. If you want to get a hold of us, you can always ping us at uh, www.urtech. .ca, that's www.urtech.ca or you can leave a question or a comment below and somebody will get back to you because that's the nature of YouTube. Thanks and have a great day. Bye bye.